Go ahead and bless the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God that we don't see, but we see all his wonders. We can see the mountains, we can see the valley, we can see the ocean, we can feel the breeze, we can see his good works. We are evidence of his existence. Give him praise, the God who has kept you from January to February to March to April to May to June to July, August, September, October, November, and December. The God that has promised to make us to end this year in praise. Give him all the glory. It is getting better. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Our God is good. We worship you, King of glory. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Brethren, very quickly, let's cry unto God for our nation. You want to say, Father, we lift up Nigeria into your hands. Lord, we ask for your intervention. Lord, restore the glory of Nigeria. Go ahead and talk to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, ancient of days. Lord, it is written, the earth is the Lord, including Nigeria. Lord, we ask that you have mercy on this nation, O Lord. Forgive our sins, O God. Forgive our act of our, our abominable acts, O God. Let your mercy prevail, O God, in Nigeria. And restore the glory of this nation, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We want to cry unto the Lord for his church. The Bible says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You want to say, Father, we lift up your church into your hands. Today, we are still in the month of ending in praise. And um, God has promised us the God we serve he is able to keep every bit of his promises towards his children. How many of us believe that? Yeah. But sometimes that the promises of God delays in our lives or that it seems not to come to pass not because God is not faithful but sometimes if we can look search inwards we will discover that the fault is from us. And there's no better time than this period that this topic is coming our way. And we are looking at forgiveness this evening. Forgiveness. As much as possible, we intend to make this uh, Bible study tonight and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I'd like us to pay very key attention to this very passage of the Bible. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. How many of us wants God to forgive us? How many of us today has asked God for forgiveness? Can I see our hands up? Praise the Lord. You believe God has heard you, right? Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Introduction. Forgiveness is a conscious decision to release feelings or resentment or vengeance towards a person or group of persons who has harmed you regardless whether they deserve your forgiveness or not. Praise the Lord. Forgiveness. It is a conscious decision. That is to say, it is not something you do unconscious. It is a deliberate act decided by you to, you know, to go ahead and release somebody who has hurt you, who has harmed you, who has done you wrong. Praise the Lord. The Lord is speaking to somebody this evening. Satan is very crafty that this is one of the strongest weapons Satan uses to rob God's children of their divine inheritance and blessings in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Remember, the Bible says, if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father also forgive you. So sometimes when we pray and it's seen, prayer is not being answered. We are to go back and look inwards. We are to sit back and do a research. Look at our lives. Why are my prayers not being answered? And if we do this critically enough, you will discover that there's somebody you are still holding one or two things against. The word of God cannot be broken. Praise the Lord. He said, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. Praise the Lord. So as we proceed, please, ushers, can you pass? Can you, be in, can you just hold the mic? Because I'd like us to, to relate to this topic as it affects us. Yes, we have defined forgiveness from here. But to your own understanding, what is forgiveness? And at what time should you forgive and not forgive? Praise the Lord. Number one, what is forgiveness? At what time should I forgive? At what time should I not forgive? Am I, as human, am I supposed to be offended when I am hurt? When I am offended, am I supposed to take offense? So first and foremost, what is forgiveness? In your own understanding. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, somebody helping us or we is something that is well understood. Amen. Okay. Let me take it that we understood or understands what forgiveness is all about. Now, when are we supposed to forgive? When we are offended. When someone offends us, when are we supposed to forgive? Or are we supposed to forgive at all? Is it biblical for us to forgive? Hello? Okay. Mommy, you said yes. Can you, 
Can you just expand a bit, man? God bless you, man. Hallelujah. God bless you, man. Mommy said, when someone offends you and the person comes to apologize and asks for your forgiveness, you are supposed to forgive. Is that correct? What about if the person fails to realize that he or she has offended you, not to talk of coming to, you know, to apologize? Praise the Lord. Amen. Can, can we interact? I've been offended. The one who offends me has not even realized that he or she has offended me, not to talk of coming to apologize. Am I supposed to hold that person in my heart and refuse to forgive? Or in another word, is our, condition, is our forgiveness conditional? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is, our, is, is it conditional for us to forgive? It's conditional. Who says yes? Can Okay, okay, mommy. <laughs> All right, man. Can you just Hallelujah. Okay. God bless you, man. Thank you so much, man. Mommy says our forgiveness should be unconditional because the one we enjoy from God, it is also unconditional. Praise the Lord. If Jesus should attach conditions, you know, for us to enjoy his forgiveness, how many of us will meet up? Therefore, because we enjoy unconditional forgiveness from God, our forgiveness also must be unconditional. So let us, let us see what we have in the outline. Why God commands forgiveness. Why God commands forgiveness. Number one, so that you don't take vengeance because vengeance belongs to God. Romans chapter 12, 17 to 19. If you are there, please, you can read for us. Romans chapter 12, 17 to 19. Also, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. Romans 12, 17 to 19. If you are there, please, you can read for us. Romans 12, 17 to 19. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, if it be, <laughs> if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Praise the Lord. For it is written, Vengeance is is mine. Meaning, when you refuse to forgive, it means you are taking the place of God. The Lord said it categorically that vengeance is mine. Praise the Lord. Vengeance is mine for I will recompense. It is in the place of God and God only to take vengeance. Praise the Lord. Can we read Genesis chapter 50, 17 to 20? Genesis chapter 17, 15 to 20. Verse 17. So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee, now the trespass of thy brethren, 
and their sins, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servant, of the servant of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Verse 18. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servant. Verse 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Praise the Lord. He said, Am I in the place of God? Who am I to take vengeance? This scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, I believe was in the mind of Joseph at this particular time that it is not in my place to take vengeance. The Lord has said, Vengeance is of you know, is, is, is the one to take vengeance. So, who am I not to forgive you? Because not forgiving you means that I am taking vengeance, I am taking the place of God. And let me tell you, you cannot avenge yourself of those who have wronged you the way God will avenge for you if you forgive and let God take vengeance. Am I correct? If you allow God to avenge for you, to take vengeance for you, there's this uh, Yoruba adage that says, when God takes over your battle, you will even pity those that you have asked God to, to deal with. The vengeance of God is total. Yours has limits. Because God knows all things, he knows how to deal with those who have decided to pursue after you. For example, you saw how he ended Pharaoh and his, and his host in the Red Sea. And after that incident, we never heard again. You know, Moses, was, Moses tried to take the place of God. And you saw how he landed him. True of us. But when God decided to take vengeance himself, rather than their enemies coming up again to hurt them, they saw their enemies being drawn before their very face. And it was a total vengeance. Praise the Lord. The Lord is speaking to someone this evening that you want to end this year in praise. Search your heart. Who is that person that you are still holding grudge against? It can deny you of ending the year in praise. As we go further, we will understand what the Lord is saying. Number two, because to refuse to forgive means to take vengeance. I think we have also dealt with this. I will go straight to, to three. Because unforgiveness usually affects the one who does not forgive. Can we read Matthew chapter 6 verse 15? Matthew chapter 6 verse 15, very quickly. Matthew 6 15. If you are there, you can read for us. Praise the Lord. For if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will God forgive you your trespass. And do you know the terrible thing about this? The one that has, the one that offended you, that you are holding grudge against. That person would have reconciled with God, and he or she will be enjoying answer prayers. But you that is bearing grudge and you have refused. To forgive such a person, the heaven is closed over you. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. It's a terrible thing. This is God speaking directly by himself. That if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will I forgive you. Please. I don't know who is that person here tonight. God has this message for. But I certainly believe that God is speaking to someone this evening. Please, you want to end this year in praise, you have to forgive. Sometimes it can be very difficult. But however difficult it is, you have no choice but to forgive. 
for your own good. Four, so that you can enjoy answer prayers. Mark chapter 11, 25 to 26. I'd like us to read this also because we want to back everything we are saying here with the scriptures. Mark chapter 11. Mark 11, 25 to 26. And when ye stand praying, forgive. For if ye, sorry, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The same thing is reoccurring. It's reoccurring. Praise the Lord. I don't want to spend much time on this because we have already expatiated on that. Number five. In order to live in peace with all men and make it to heaven, you have to forgive. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, follow, sorry, it, it is Hebrews 12 14. You will see Hebrews 12 1 24 there. It's Hebrews 12 verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness for without which no man just see the Lord. You can see how important it is to forgive. Without forgiveness, can we live peaceably with all men? Is it possible? Can you live in peace with the one you refuse to forgive? So you can see that peace, forgiveness, and holiness, the Lord is equating both in the same range. Follow peace with all men and holiness, for without which no man shall see the Lord. Praise the Lord. Peace. Forgiveness. That's why the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You must follow peace with all men. It's a criteria to make heaven. No man with the spirit of unforgiveness can ever make it to heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Having enjoyed God's forgiveness, failure to forgive others can trigger God's anger. Praise the Lord. Having enjoyed God's forgiveness, refusing to forgive men, women, boys, girls, whoever that has offended you can trigger, can trigger God's you know, anger. Can we read Matthew chapter 18? Matthew 18, verse 32. Matthew chapter 18, verse 32. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay, now, please read 19 so that we can get an understanding of it. 19, verse 19. Yes, 19, yes. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on it... No, as sorry, sir, I mean um, 33, 33. Okay, the next verse, okay. Yeah. Should not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This was a debtor that his creditor forgave the debts he was owing. Amen. Remember, he has enjoyed, you know, pardon over the debt he was owing. And somebody also was owing him. He refused to forgive that person just as his creditor had forgiven him. And it came to the knowledge of his creditor that he was refusing to forgive the one that was, you know, he was, he was refusing to forgive also his debtor. And you know what? The, the, the creditor had to cancel that pardon over his debt. And he was asking him that, having enjoyed pardon over the debt you were owing me, 
should not you also extend such you know uh, 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 liberty to the one that is owing you also so if we refuse to forgive men their trespasses haven't enjoyed the forgiveness of God we are asking God to cancel the forgiveness that we have enjoyed from him before praise the Lord I pray that the Lord will give us understanding that as many that we are bearing grudge against as many that we have refused to release from our hearts God will give us the grace to do so this evening in Jesus name I don't know that person may be seated close to you and most of a prosperous 2022 because you want the heavens to be open over you because you want to you know experience accelerated you know speed the Lord is saying to you this evening you have to let go you have to let go and you don't know when your time you know will come if not the grace of God we are enjoying what is the guarantee that we will leave this place today and get home alive and should it happen in that state of unforgiveness it is straight passports to hell there's no two ways about it if it happened if it happened straight passport to hell a friend of mine think about some few days ago we spoke and I told him that when I come to Benin this for this Christmas I will I'll be passing the I'll, I'll pass the ninth place. Just yesterday morning at 5 30 a.m. my phone rang. One of our friends called me and he was asking, was checking out for uh, on me. And I suspected that for but I could not figure out what was. But I just knew something was not wrong because it is it is it is it is not usual. So at about eight, I checked my WhatsApp and I saw that. He told me that guy has passed on. What happened? The guy returned from church and undressed and put on something else that they called him for a job. Why was there a slant and that was all? Praise the Lord. And the wife, when I rang the wife, the wife was telling me that for like three weeks now, the guy has been complaining that, you know, his tires, you know, stuff like that, that God has not answered it. Like that. If that guy died in any in this in what we are talking about now, it is too late for him. Praise the Lord. You don't know when it will come. You don't know. This we are talking about every day, heaven and hell. It is very real. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. No repentance in hell. Bible says the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting to them that fear him. It is everlasting when you die in Christ and makes it to heaven. In heaven you continue to enjoy God's mercy. But the one that died and goes to hell, God's mercy ceases as soon as such a person closes his or her eyes in death. There's no mercy in hell. There's no repentance. You cannot forgive again in, in the grave. Praise the Lord. The Lord is speaking to someone this evening. Praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, to fulfill God's forgiveness, we have no choice but to forgive fellow man. Just like we just read, that wicked man fulfilled the mercy he has enjoyed before, because he refused to forgive others. May our unforgiveness not ruin us in Jesus' name. Somebody is not saying amen. Hallelujah. You can get that in Luke chapter 11, verse 4a. Because of time factor, we'll go to the next one. You remain in the shackle by the chains of unforgiveness 
and your soul, spirit, and body pay seriously for it if you fail to forgive. You remain under the chains, under the pains of unforgiveness. Your spirit, soul, and body pays dearly for it if you refuse to, fail, you know, to forgive. You are carrying burden. You pray and the heaven is shut over you because you have refused to forgive. Your soul is in a dilemma because you have refused to forgive. While your physical body, your head, suffers also. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. No one with the spirit of unforgiveness will make it to heaven. Can we read Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4? So, sorry, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 11. Okay, sorry, 12, 14. Hebrews 12. Just the, 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 the portion we just read, not quite long. Follow peace with all men and holiness, for without which no man can see the Lord. Then we'll go to the last point here. You must forgive because Jesus commands it. Praise the Lord. You must forgive. The word must was used there. It is not a suggestion. You have no choice over it. You must forgive because Jesus has commanded it. Praise the Lord. As we conclude... I will just read for us here. Bitterness. This bitterness starts from a very little offense someone has done against you that you refuse to forgive. Because when you refuse to forgive, it degenerates to bitterness. And when it de degenerates to bitterness, you start imagining things unimaginable how to hurt such a person how to stand in the way of such a person how to ensure nothing good comes to that person how to destroy such person's image and so on and so forth because it has degenerated to bitterness and from bitterness it degenerates further to anger remember it was through the spirit of jealousy from jealousy to bitterness and bitterness to anger that Cain killed his brother Abel. A lot of the act of wickedness you experience today in the society is as a result of all this. And the hallmark of our faith as Christians is love and forgiveness. That is what differentiates us from the world. That's is the gospel that Jesus Christ brought. Remember in the cross, he was in pain and he cried to the Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When the soldiers came to arrest him, Peter tried to, to, you know, to, you know, to take vengeance. But you know what he told Peter? He said, don't do this. Do you think I, I cannot you know, call on my father? And he will send angels. That's you exercise forgiveness, it is not a sign of weakness. Rather, it's a sign of strength. It is strength. It is maturity. Maturity in the spirit that you exercise forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anger is a strong feeling of annoyance and hostility it is human it is human to get angry but it is abnormal to allow it's abnormal to dwell in anger amen it is human to get angry but abnormal against the will of God to dwell in anger Anger is of the devil. Unforgiveness is of Satan. And there is nothing 
good that unforgiveness and anger produces. The end product of it is damnation. Praise the Lord. I pray for every one of us that as the year is coming to an end, you sit back, you do thorough search over you. Who is that person that you are yet? I tell people, I said, except there's somebody that I don't know of. By the grace of God, God, I, I bear no grudge against anyone. I have no enemy. I can be very furious, very angry when I am offended. But as soon as I'm able to have the opportunity to ventilate my anger, it's off by the special grace of God. Amen. As long as I have the opportunity, you know, to speak out, it goes and it dies like that. By the grace of God, I have no, I have no one that I, I bear grudge against. And the Lord knows that. Amen. It is not by power. Every one of us, we can ask God for that grace. There's a special grace God will release on you. And you see yourself flowing in that realm. It is a special virtue. It's a special grace that you must ask of God. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to stand on our feet. The word of God has gone forth. It is not the number. Okay, please. I don't know if anyone has question. Okay, man. Maybe just one or two minutes for us to deal with it. Hallelujah. That fix, you know. Now you say it, 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 that is a criteria for heaven, so that I don't miss it. Uh, I want you to throw light on maybe I and this sister now. There's something you did to me, okay? And I'm firm, you know. I'm just firm on it that this thing you've done is not good, or maybe like that. Instead of you know, on her own part, she now becomes offended in me. You know, for that being that firm. So I want you to throw the difference from a believer because we are interacting and many things go go on. Offenses come up even amongst us. So the uh, to me, to me, I I want you to throw more like that. Now, when you are firm. Telling this sister in your department or maybe in, in anywhere that this thing you've done is not good. And she's not taking it. Instead of that, the man takes it as an offense. If he sees you, you know, even when you want to embrace, mm, you, know, you know, that kind. You understand? So the difference between these two, put a little bit light to it. Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm sure we understood the question our sister have asked. If I, if I would put it in one word, that she tries to, you know, with love, correct a fellow sister. And the sister took offense in that and starts uh, bearing grudge against her. What can she do in that situation? Does anybody want to throw, want to profile her to that? Okay. All right. Can we give that sister? Usha, please. Can we? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the, the, in life, offenses are bound to happen. So when I offend my sister or my sister offends me and have refused to accept that he has offended me and then I approach my sister to like what you did to me or what you said about me, I don't like it. And he's refusing, praise God. Uh, what I'm supposed to do is to forgive this person 
You know, of course, we've done that before approaching this person. You are approaching him so that you can have peace whenever he sees the person. So the next thing, and the person refuses. He's not even accepting it. You just go ahead and pray for that fellow. That's all. Because when you pray, you no longer see the wrong the person does to you. That's the truth. I've tried it and I noticed it works. If anybody offends you and is not even accepting, do you understand? Just pray for that person. As you begin to pray for that person, even you yourself, you will not even be seeing the wrong that the person is doing to you again. And eventually in the process, the person will change. Praise God. God bless you, man. Praise the Lord. I think um, God has used that to and that is it. You have done your best by going to the person and the person is refusing. God is the one that, the Bible says, the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turneth it to whatever direction he desires. When you have done your beats as a person and the person is adamant, commits he or she to the hands of the Lord. That is, if you truly want that person to be reconciled back to you, you commit, Lord, I have done my bit, but the situation persists. I commit her, I commit it into your hands. Please, and you see God works wonders. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, sister. So, please, can there be forgiveness without repentance? Okay, God bless you. Can there be forgiveness? You, you mean repentance from the person that has offended you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Can somebody, somebody wants to also? Sister Uche, you want to try? Can there be forgiveness without repentance? The Bible says that if your brother offends you, you forgive him 70 times, 7 times. There is no place where he says your brother has to repent before you forgive him. We are commanded, we are mandated to forgive 70 times, 7 times, 490 times for the same person. So the forgiveness, like he has, like our pastor has rightly said, the forgiveness is actually for your own good. So if the person doesn't repent, most of the time they don't even repent. Anyway, people that, people that offend you, they don't even realize that they've offended you or they even want to offend you more. So the repentance is not, even, is not even in their books. It's on your own part as a believer to forgive 490 times and move on. I don't know if I answered you, my sister. God bless you, mom. And again, how many days do we have in a year? Three what? 365. In a leap year, we have 366, right? And if you times that 70 times 7, it gives you about 490. So which means... Your, your, there's even a carryover. Let's assume your brother offends you on a daily basis. It means that uh, that person can still not hit that mark of 9 or 490. You know, I understand the point that you are coming from. You are speaking from the human angle that somebody has offended you and the person has not shown remorse. The person has not uh, no, no, no element of repentance and probably you, you know, can you forgive such a person? That is in the human angle. I, I understand perfectly well. Okay? But we have come into Christ. And the Bible says, except your righteousness, as see that of the Gentiles, you do what also? Perish. So, the difference now between we that are now in Christ and those still in the world is that we are now putting on Christ. Remember, Bible says, while we are yet sinners, he does what? He died for us. So that was purely unconditional. Unconditional. And so also, we are, and that is what differentiates us from others. Is your question answered? All right. Uh, because of time factor, I know this is a, a topic that is quite interactive. But the take home this evening is that 
the year is coming to an end, and the theme we have been treating since the beginning of this year, this month, is ending in praise. Unforgiveness can actually deny a person from enjoying that. My prayer for you is that you will not be a victim of, of, of that in Jesus' name. In conclusion, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. To reign with Jesus, you must forgive. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. It is God's command, and the word of God cannot be broken. Shall we rise to our feet? Just one prayer this evening. You cry unto the Lord that, Father, I, as many that has offended me, I am terribly hurt. I don't know how to go about the forgiveness. Please let your spirit come into me now. Let your spirit come into me now. Of my own, I cannot do it. I rely on you, Spirit of the Lord. Help me that unforgiveness will not deny me of your blessings, even to end well in praise in the name of Jesus. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Let us ask God for mercy on ourselves. Let us say, God, have mercy on me. Every act of unforgiveness, God, have mercy on me. Wash me clean with your blood. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let us stretch forth our hands so our pastor and begin to pray for him. Let us pray and tell God every virtue that has gone out of him, that God should replenish. Let us pray and ask God for more grace to be able to, to keep on forgiving everybody than offending. He has already given us his own method of doing it, and God is helping him. But he needs grace to actually continue and to be there so that this unforgiveness will not be his own downfall because the devil is always there. Let us pray. God give him grace. Abba, give him grace in the name of Jesus. Let us cover him and his family with the blood of Jesus. Let us tell God that they will not fail. They will not fall. And this heaven that we are all looking for, that we are all waiting for, that he will not miss it. Nobody in his family will miss it. Let us tell God on his behalf that this year shall hand in praise for him and his family. Concerning everything that, that, is, that is bothering him, God will lay his hand upon them and they shall hand in praise. My father and my God. Your son shall hand him this year shall hand him praise for your son concerning his family, everything that concerning nobody shall hand in praise. Nobody we have cause to glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord, because you are our God. For in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Daddy, we say thank you for your son. We thank you for using him today. Every virtue that has gone out of him. We pray that you replenish back in hundred folds in Jesus' name. Daddy, I pray for him in the name of Jesus Christ. That on the last day will not be found wanting your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Even as the devil will raise up his head, Baba Lord Almighty, give him victory over every temptation in the name of Jesus. That they will cover him and his family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you are blessed be their holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. It is time to give our offering. Yeah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, you are the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. you are the Prince of Peace, our life, our love. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, you are the mighty God, oh, the great I am. Hallelujah, 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 H
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.